It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Providing welcome to an Another edition of Cryptid Red Host with Grizzly and Psychic Medium Sonia. Hi. <laughs> so how are you doing, Sonia, baby? Uh, not too shabby. How are you? So what is... Oh, wonderful. Uh, so we got a topic tonight. Let me adjust my microphone here. Hey, crazy. Hey, Sean, what's happening? What's shaking and baking in there? Uh, so we have got an excited topic tonight, don't we, ladies and gentlemen? Don't be saw You asked for it, and we are going to provide it. So it's going to be yeah. interesting. So what is our topic? It's the Brown Mountain Lights of North Carolina. Yeah. So what is, is the... Brad heard so much about it. What is actually? Well, nobody really knows. That's the thing about it. No, I mean, um, <laughs> of course. Uh, <laughs> uh, I bet my mom's home. <laughs> right in time, mom. Um, the brown nobody knows what the brown mountain lights are, but like it's been investigated three times by the U.S. government and um, hundreds of times by you know other uh, something flew into my face. Other research companies, you know, or other research uh, teams, you know, um, nobody really knows. It's really you know when you see the lights, like when you see them, they're like giant orbs in the sky, and they come down and they come into the the mountains like that, and you can't get to where they are to be able to investigate like, you know, face to face with them, you know, so they catch them on these, um, was it Linfield Gorge or something like that? Or, uh, yeah. So they go into this, like this gorge and they, in the mountains there and they just, you know, they have tours and everything like, you know, and this has been going on for how long? Um, all the way back, even the Cherokee, uh, the Cherokee and the, was it the Catawba Indians uh, had stories about them? I didn't, I didn't, oh my God, my dog jumped out the window. <laughs> um, uh, they have stories about them. I didn't read up on any of the legends uh, of the natives, you know, I, uh, I don't know why. That's usually the first place I go for information, but I don't know, you know, even with today's technology, I mean, I'm sure the stories so, are probably, they're all similar, you know. Where are the Brown Mountain Lights, Laurel's asking. North Carolina <laughs> Crazy Witch says. Right. Actually, she uh, sent, uh, Bonnie, pull up some videos. I, I think you sent me one video. Uh, I did. I'm that go was ahead a pretty good show one. That. His, I think his and that one we watched that one night was the two best ones I found so far, which there's other, there's other pictures and there's other. Yeah, so yeah. let me share this one while you pull up the other one and send it to me. Uh, here is a copy of the Brown Mountain Lights up close, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. How's it going, everyone? In this video, we're going to take an up close look at the phenomenon known as the Brown Mountain Lights. This is a collection of photos I took in 2015 of the lights. First off, to get some context on where these photos were taken, let's hop over to Google Earth. Well, could get out of that. So here you can see the Wiseman's View Overlook. Down here is the Linville Gorge. Yep. And over here is Table Rock Mountain, where the lights appeared that I took photos of. Hopping back over to the photos. Let's dive into it. So here is the ridge along the top of Table Rock. These photos were taken somewhere between 9 and 11 o'clock at night. 
so it was pretty much pitch black. So in order to get any kind of photos that dark, the photos had to be taken at 20 to 30 second exposure times. So that's why you're seeing a trail of light here. This trail of light indicates that over those 20 to 30 seconds, whatever this light was, was moving through the frame over that course of time. Continuing on, you can see whatever this light is, was bright enough to light up the surrounding forest as it moved down through the mountain. I don't know what these lights are, I don't claim to know. A lot of people have their suspicions, either being ball lightning, some type of natural gas, aliens. Many theories are floating about, about what these are. But you can see here, kind of cycling between these two photos, on how the light moves from one area to another. You can see just this purple-blue glow coming from the lights and how it lights up the surrounding forest. And then it will continue to move all the way on up the mountain here, lighting up the forest as it goes. Here's another one showing the movement of this light that moves through the forest. This one I found particularly creepy. So if we zoom in here on the shape, it almost looks like some type of little phantasmal force, some little body of some kind. Almost looks like two of them. No idea what that is. Here's another series of lights floating up off the ground. You can kind of see the rock face of the mountain here, this outcropping of rocks and all the lights are floating up above it somehow. Another one in the same location. You can see the lights moving up and down the mountain in various spots, multiple of them. Another one here. This one's very busy with activity, all sorts of lights of different shapes and sizes. Some sort of green shapes in the background. These will show up and form in some other pictures as well. Again, same location, but obviously different shapes and movement of the lights. Very strange. And here you'll start to see a recurring theme of some of these lights have sort of green trails behind them. Kind of linking multiple lights together. This one, sort of on the other hand, is just a very bright white light. You can see it sort of lighting the forest around it here. As with this one. They still kind of have a purple and blue glow, glow to them, but different than the others. Do you know you should create a podcast, but you're not sure how to monetize it? No, I think. do not. This one is really unexplainable. You can see here the light over the course of time traveled up through the air and circled around making strange shapes way up off the ground never seen anything like that before now we'll hop over to the top of table rock this is where the kind of left side of it drops off on a cliff face and right at the very top a handful of photos of the lights seem to congregate right at the tip of here in multiple orbs of some kind. And then just as quick as they were there, they would disappear. And there wasn't much left 
but one small light behind. But then just as they were gone, they would come back. Same as before. Multiple balls of light sort of floating up above the rocks. Another look at them, you can see here again this sort of green trail linking multiple of the lights. It's something coming out from below it here. I'm not sure what that is either. Same location, but now the lights are emitting a much different type of glow. It's pure green. There's no blue or purple, just green light. And again, extending up from the ground, up through the sky. Again, same location, but much more spread out and smaller. And you can see it lighting up the entire area up at the top of this mountain here and lighting up the surrounding force around it. And then this one here, great example of this green linkage I was talking about between multiple orbs. I'm sure it's some sort of energy being transferred between the two, or what it could be. This one I found really interesting, kind of further to the right on the top of the mountain. But again, on a rock face, you can see the, the multiple rocks here. One bright purple orb here, sort of lighting the entire forest below it. You can see how bright that was. Pretty amazing to see this. Got another one in the same location. Again, lighting up all the forest down below it here. You can zoom in on it. You can see kind of one big orb, a smaller one, some different shapes behind it here. And finally, this one here. Very creepy two small glowing orbs lighting up the side of the rock face. If you look really closely, you can almost see some type of figure standing there on the rock. You can kind of see the two legs, maybe a little head here. Really hard to tell what that is, but whatever these were lighting up, very creepy. Anyway, that's all for today. If you like this video, that's weird. That is like very strange. Now, I heard the phenomenon for quite a long time. Uh, now, here's another video that she's found. It's uh, a little bit better because those were still photographs. So let me pull up this other one here uh, as soon as I can find my Facebook page. Voila, titi. And ta 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 ta. I don't know why I closed it all the way out. So, yeah, do you want me to go with the first one or the second one, hon? We'll go with the first one then. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. Ring this over. And, uh, Yeah, it did look like a tall figure back there, like, like it was standing on the rock. Now, what's really strange, ladies and gentlemen, is that if you saw the Google Maps, it's nothing that you and I can climb up to. Uh, this is like very high terrain. Uh, you would have to have like mountain gear and repelling gear to get up there somehow. Yeah, and well, that one picture, you're right. It looks like something standing there beside that. And it, he, he didn't say nothing about it, but it was weird how it lit up and it looked like something standing there beside him because I was real curious about that. Yeah, that was strange. All right, yeah, here it comes. Uh, let's see here. Well... I just and I couldn't find that one we watched. I don't know why. It was really cool, but 
What happened to the video here? Um, Hold on, let me uh, click it back up here. Okay, it's called Brown Mountain Lights. Now let me find it. Uh, window, I think it's on the window. Brown, okay, here we go. I'll make sure I hit the... All right, make sure let me know if the audio is working. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if I hit the button or not. Is the audio working? No. Nope. That's what I thought. Let me stop it, rewind it. I don't know why they just don't let me just hit one button. We can just share the screen and don't worry about hitting the audio. There we go. Let's see here. Yeah, I can't find the video. It's called Brown Mountain Lights. Do you want me to resend it? No, I've got it. I've just got to figure out what button. I got so many windows open. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Rally room. Oh, here we go. But I don't know if I uh, cancel, present, share screen, share audio, window. Okay, here we go. Now I got it. Now we should have audio. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. No audio still. Oh, wait. It's not even playing. Nothing? <laughs> well, it's not playing. It's just that there's white screen. I don't know what happened. <laughs> no way. No way. Guys, want to see something cute while we wait? Look. My sister's All birthday. Right. Be entertaining. <laughs> Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. It says Brown Mountain. Let me open up in another browser here. This way we'll do it the right way. Another way here. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I had the video up twice, but try it this way. All right, this is the second one you sent, right? Yes. Yeah. All right, a, commercial. Cool here we go. All right, now let's try this one more time. Share screen, audio, wave. There we go. All right, now we're in business. Here we go. Off to the left of the table now. Bob says this might be Hickory or Boone. But they're way many yeah, miles off in the distance. Morgan, Hickory, that's not right in the table mountain. Is this? You can see that. And then right here's the mountain. Bill is over here. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. But, um, yeah. And then the plea table plea. mountain has that distinction. Yeah. Flat really? top slant. Um, yeah, so it we, takes a minute for this one to get going, uh, but once it does, reappear. It's right there. It's here. Put, put the binoculars on. What the hell is that? Right on the edge of the mountain. Just got the binoculars. Just boom. 
No, an aircraft would have red and green nav lights and a strobe. It's moving. It's moving to the left. There's an airplane. Well, up no, look, at, look at the top of Table Rock. It's just floating there. See, see, and he says, I saw that a rock. minute ago, yeah. just sitting there. Right edge. An airplane would look different than that. An airplane is off yeah, to the Yeah, but don't but stay looking at right but above Table Rock. Like this uh, this orange light is slowly rising. Yeah. Well, we're looking okay. at we're Table we're Rock. The right. No, no. Look over. Not the flashing thing. Over oh, to the no, right. No, no, oh, I saw something. Yes. Any sister, are you watching this? I Disappear. Disappear. That's it. Yeah, that one was just it, but it just appeared there out of nowhere. It just like it just like it came right. on, you know, like it was already there, and it just kind of. There's one more she sent me. Mm. Let's see here. Yeah. Yeah. Did I send you one? I can't find. There was another one that was a pretty good one, and I don't know where it has wandered off to it's not in my things i thought i'd saved it though um. i'm horrible at this <laughs> oh oh look it's still doing it eh? you're not getting it all oh, night vision it's smoking you're videotaping all this thing? Absolutely. <laughs> what, Josh, what better do I have to do, you know? Just turn them off again and on. I thought that was a good one, and maybe it was really Yes. Oh, look, look, look. If you guys see that night vision, it's really, it's like a flying saucer land. Down there. Oh! Some of it every year, but. Oh! Oh, I see that. That's it. That's what you want to do. Get out your giant laser and point your laser at what you don't know what it is. That's a really good way. There are some, so there are some better videos out there on that. But I found Riverside. Yeah, I know. And like, I, I couldn't find that one that we watched. That one that's like really good. Like, I don't know. I horribly prepared, obviously. <laughs> but they actually, they, it, it, there's some videos that looks like there's lanterns up in, in the thing. Let me uh, do a fact check here. I know Laurel, crazy witch. Hold on, bear with me here. Let me bring up some uh, facts here about the mountain. I could have, uh, I could have done my research better. <laughs> Let's see here. Get that off here. But it, it's it's really strange because nobody can figure it out, and the government's been out there. Brown Mountain, and they cannot. It, it, you know, a lot of people say. It's gas, natural. It, it, it's 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 not gas. Okay, so it says Brown Mountain refers to a specific mountain, Blue Ridge Mountains of Western North Carolina, United States. It's located in Burke County, near the town of Morgantown. Brown Mountain gained fame and notoriety due to reports of unexplained phenomena known as the Brown Mountain Lights. Great. The Brown Mountain Lights are mysterious lights that have been observed in the area for many years. Witness claims to see glowing orbs, flashes, and other luminous phenomenon that appears and disappears without any apparent explanation. These lights have become the subject of folklore, speculation, and attraction locals and tourists and researchers alike. Numerous theories have been proposed to explain that brown mountain lights ranging from phenomenon, paranormal, extraterrestrial activity to natural phenomenon such as ball lightning which i do not agree it's not ball lightning no. atmospheric gases which i do not agree 
However, despite numerous investigations and scientific studies, the true nature of these lights remain unknown. The phenomenon gained significant attention in the mid-20th century when a folk song called The Ballad of the Brown Mountain Lights was written about the mysterious lights. Since then, the Brown Mountain Lights have become a popular topic in discussion and a tourist attraction with people visiting the area in hopes of witnessing the phenomenon for themselves. And it says it's worth noting that the existence of the nature of Brown Mountain Lights continue to be debated and there has been no conclusive evidence has been presented to definitely explain their origin. Right. Now, I sent you that other video that I that we watched. Um, did you? Yeah. Yeah. I and, and, and I read up on it too. Like there was a couple things about there was uh, reports in the Civil War about them. There was reports, but they said that that it was probably the trains because the train came through there. But if you read the reports, the reports said they flew all around the mountain, you know, like, so they're trying to disprove that and say it was a train and there's no way that could have been a train. Um, it's, it's weird because it's where it's located. That's the thing. Yeah, Laurel, and, I pointed a lead uh, LED flashlight at the night sky and flashed the light off and on a few times. And shortly after that, put it out a half blue and half red and white symbol of shockwave. Ooh. You've been contacted. Uh, Linda Judd, like your videos, catch you again. Bye for now. Explain that. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Linda. Bye. So uh, glad you stopped in. Here's the next video, ladies and gentlemen. Let me uh, present it and share a screen. And I'm going to make sure I hit the audio. There we go. We'll get that off. Thanks for stopping in, Linda. All right. Let me click that off. It didn't click off. Let's see here. Uh, All right, here we go. There, look at that. Look at that. What you got? I got a blue. Ooh. Yeah, I got a blue light. Oh, there it is again. Where are you? Watch right in here. Man, I ain't never seen anything like that. There it Whoa. is. There it is. There it is. Oh, oh, look that, at that. That's got to be reflective. Look at that. Though, is it? Hi, Linda. What the hell is that? Was that a reflection? Well, the last time was different than the first two times. Well, it, it keeps... You can't hear me. It keeps disappearing. Wow, you ever seen anything like that, Josh? And Josh, it's showing up on night vision blue. That's why I'm thinking this. Maybe this is a ref some kind. Was there a light being shined that we didn't know about? Because it, it shouldn't be blue on night vision. What is that? I only got a glimpse of it, but it was pretty distinct. If that wasn't a reflection, I'm not sure what the heck that was. Well, here's the thing. Earlier, I saw it up in here. Yeah. And I dismissed it. I thought, uh, I don't know what that was. But then three times. I have to go back and look at that. That was bizarre. And right next to the brown mountain lights. Yeah, because the light. Light lights. Huh. Is that moving? Uh, I'm sorry. Is that moving? The brown mountain lights? Uh, no, they're still in the same spot. But there was a blue light that showed up like three times. And the last time it kind of raced. You know what? It looked like it almost manifested again. Do you have a, a laser on that camera? No. The hell was that? It was very distinct. Yes. Were you recording? Yes. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, we get to look at it later. I was just hoping maybe to do it again. Huh. All right, station one, anything interesting happening there? Over. Uh, that's negative at this point. So, would you, and we are scouting out with the night vision goggles, and she's going to let me know, but at this point, nothing. Okay, just a moment ago, Dean saw and was able to videotape a rather distinct bluish 
luminous form and we're trying to see if we can rule out any lasers or other lights were you shining any light lasers or lights at that station over uh, no we've got a green laser and no we weren't now there are blue Copy that. there are blue lasers but they're very expensive because it's a newer technology that 10-4 over. Over. okay that was interesting. You'd have to know that somebody was out there looking. You know, if you was somebody out there playing with a laser, you would have to know somebody was out there looking, you know. Right. He's out there trying right. to hoax it. But it, there's thousands upon thousands of reports, um, you know, from Ami. I mean, I mean and, and, and the thing about it, they said the most, you know, I guess the uh, the best reports to believe to, to really believe would be the ones that were like civil civil war era and older folks because people back in the day you know you didn't lie about stuff like that unless you wanted to be the crazy person in town. I mean, it's still the same way today, but like you know, it's a, it's a different kind of thing. People, you know, I don't know. People didn't like make up stories about stuff that was going to make them look crazy and. But, you know, what, what really was strange is, is that how that one caught everything and it was, it lit up, it looked like a subject, somebody standing there on top of that rock cliff. Yeah, a couple of his, what those, because he used the, the long exposure shots on a camera, which means it just da, 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 takes pictures, you know, so you can put the stream of pictures together and it looked like a video. Well, that's what that's what that long exposure does, you know, and that's why. I, and when he when he slowed them down and zoomed in on a lot of them, they look like figures, like you know, arms, legs, head kind of figures. There was a couple of them that kind of look like um, I guess kind of look like uh, fairies or something, you know, or some kind of like creature that was in the light, you know. That was pretty cool. Yeah, but when they say swamp gas or balls of lightning, let me show you what a ball of lightning looks like. A ball yeah. of lightning. Yeah, I saw my lightning. first ball of lightning a couple of years ago, and I was like, it scared me because I saw it here at the house, and I was like, oh, my God, what is this? <laughs> you know, it's just something else now, for me. I've to actually I looked it witnessed up, a ball of lightning. Yeah, when you uh, see it, it PD. it's like something out of a sci-fi movie. You don't expect it. And, and you definitely, if you've never heard of it, it'll definitely frighten you because it looks like something out of a movie. And I had yeah, to go. Yeah. I was like, is there balls of light and lightning, you know, in the sky? I can say lightning today. <laughs> you did say lightning. <laughs> I can say that word for nothing yesterday. Uh, All right. Here we go. I don't, I don't, I didn't, yeah. Share <laughs> tab. Oh, here we go. We got the audio on this one. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen seeing mysterious balls of electricity hovering in the air. So where do these anomalies come from? And what do they mean? It's May 2019 near Minsk, Belarus. A man named Andrei Turkhanovets posts a bizarre video. Watch. Now that is a ball of lightning. Let's rewind yeah, that back. What is that bright blue sphere? And how can it travel across the railroad tracks, throwing off sparks as it moves? The internet's reaction blew Andre's mind. It has almost uh, two million viewers uh, at this moment. Some commenters guess that Andre has recorded a rare phenomenon known as ball lightning strange luminescent balls in the air that eyewitnesses have been reporting since the 1600s some 19th right. century accounts claim they smelled of sulfur and considered them the work of the devil more recently there was this sighting near a field in Novosibirsk, russia this image resembles a phenomenon reported back in world war ii odd zigzagging balls of light in the sky allied fighter pilots dubbed them Foo Fighters. And it was really kind of universally believed uh, amongst the Allies that this was likely some type of uh, advanced Nazi uh, technology. But interestingly enough, when you look at uh, the Luftwaffe, so the German Air Force, they were seeing them too. 
To this day, some scientists argue that ball lightning doesn't exist based on how rarely it's seen. So is that what we're seeing here? To kick off our analysis, we went back to our forensic video analyst, Michael Primo. Primo <laughs> by breaking down Andre's video, focusing not on the images, but the sounds. I noted that the sounds were up front and didn't sound natural with being in the outdoors. Sounds like something that was added. He concludes that the Belarus video has been edited. Yet he says the other example from Russia has not been. So could it be an example of the famous Foo Fighters? McMillan says the ball of light looks similar, but behaves differently. What's uh, been called a Foo Fighter lasted for a great deal of time and engaged in a lot of maneuvers and stuff that you just don't see there. So could it instead be a natural weather phenomenon? Atmospheric scientist Dr. Deanna Hentz traced the weather conditions in Russia at the time of the sighting. If you're going to get ball lightning, lightning also has to be generally a likelihood, and I'm not seeing a lot of evidence of either. It does kind of reduce the likelihood that that is a possibility. However, yeah. Hentz sees that so little is known about ball lightning that it's hard to rule out. It is a very poorly understood phenomenon, and because it's difficult to capture, it's also very, very difficult to study. So the Russian video might be a genuine example. But when we talk to Andre toward the end of our investigation, he admits he created the dazzling effect in his video with CGI. Ah! I, I processed uh, the video on my computer Dang with him. Um, a specialized software. All these so years. he never thought it would go viral. Isn't that something? Got so busted. our verdict? The Belarus video is clearly doctored. Please, that sound design was a dead giveaway. Yes. Isn't that see? And this is the problem we're having when it comes to uh, paranormal videos and Bigfoot and Dogman videos now, because with this CGI and AIG and AI, you cannot tell, ladies and gentlemen, if something is real or not. So unless you know the person that took the video themselves, how do you know that it's authentic? So anymore, people send me videos and pictures. I'm just like, hmm, okay. I don't say anything anymore uh, because unless I know you or somebody knows, you know, uh, with technology, that video has been out for years and I had no idea it was debunked. I had no idea. So I'm glad we played the video and, and proved that. So, <laughs> Well, ball lightning does exist. I've seen it. Um, I'm I've sure seen my it too. It does look yeah. like that. But it, 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 now mine it, did not make but, noise. No, it doesn't make noise. Uh, but it doesn't stay around like that either. Like, um, Mine lasts about four or five seconds. Yeah. And so for it to be on the ground traveling around like that, like it would... I don't know. I but think that did good I with think, the sparks. Well, see, I think the stuff in the sky, like the ball lightning, when it's like that, is different from some of these things that we're seeing. Some of these, the auras are different. With lightning, you know how much I love lightning. <laughs> I um. Beautiful. <laughs> so, it has its own aura. I know it's a color and it's all this and that, but like every energy has like a different like. Or, or like a feeling like you get. And um, like the, those orbs and the ball lightning, it's different. Like what I seen in the sky, I immediately knew it was lightning. I'd never seen it before. It scared me because it was weird and unusual. And I wasn't expecting to see something like that in the middle of like, you know, the night. Um, yeah, I guess I am expecting to see <laughs> anything at this point. <laughs> I better be careful what I say. I'll manifest something, <laughs> something else, but like, um, like I, it's like the orbs are different. Like there's a different energy that resonates in them. I don't know. I'd explain it. Like, I don't know. So the people that do not know why I was like, it's beautiful. <laughs> so for the people that have not watched the other shows the other day, you know, <laughs> uh, Sonny is a psychic medium. So she does know when things are going to happen or about to happen. 
So I'm going to give you this quick story. So we're sitting here and we're FaceTiming each other, right? And uh, she's like, it's about to rain. I'm like, well, okay, nice. So uh, she grabs her phone and she's like, listen, it's raining. And she goes, it's about to hell. And uh, I was like, really? And she's like, yeah. And she takes her phone and she turns it over and goes out to the window. And lo and behold, it starts to hell. And she goes, look how beautiful it is. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 look right there. Stop, like, don't move. Look right there. There's, there's a Bigfoot Sasquatch right 40 feet from your window. It's beautiful, isn't it? Look at it, the lightning. It lightning. It lightning. It lightning. And she's like, I in. see it, but the storm's beautiful. And I'm like, stop, don't move. There's Bigfoot 40 feet from your window. <laughs> Hold your phone still. She's like, I see it. It's okay. It's beautiful. <laughs> I said, I said, he said, did I you see like, that? Oh I said, yeah, did you see the lightning? He said, the lightning? He's like, uh, no, there was Bigfoot. You didn't see that? I was like, yeah, I seen it. She's been sitting there for a moment. <laughs> then she started rocking yeah. in between trees. Yeah. But like I was more head. worried about, I was more what interested in Bigfoot. And she's like looking at the lightning. Oh, how beautiful. Did you see that? And I was like, oh my God, are you serious? Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> so that's why I, I, I mimic her sometimes by doing that. And so, yeah. Like, yeah, so I was like, I was really, because she was at, she's there all the time. So, but the lightning isn't there all the time. I know for you, I was, <laughs> you just, yeah. I guess I should have, I guess I should have been more excited with you because I didn't realize that was the first time you had ever laid eyes on one. I guess I just didn't think about it. So, it was I, beautiful. yeah, I ruin your special moment. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, come on now. There's people out here wandering in the woods for 30 or 40 Mm -hmm. years, haven't seen a lick. And then, you know, it it starts to hell, and she's going to show me the hell. And lo and behold, there's a creature 40 feet from her window standing out there in the tree line looking at her. So I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, I could not believe that. So, you know, it's like, oh. (laughs) But yes, so that's what happened. So, yeah. and why was she rocking back and forth and at your window? Well, cause, okay, so right before the storm, it was coming a storm. I knew it was coming a storm. I'd seen the storm. I'd been outside, and I was like, "All right, well, before it storms, I'm gonna go out to the chicken coop and get all the eggs." And so she watched me bring two bucketfuls of eggs into the house, and I didn't even stop by the woods and drop a couple off, you know. So she was like. You get them eggs, <laughs> and, and 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 when she jumped out from behind the tree, she didn't really jump out from behind the tree. But when she stepped out from behind the tree, like at that moment, lightning, the lightning had hit, and I'd already seen her standing there. Like I thought I'd seen her. I thought I'd seen her, and but when the lightning hit, it was like she it scared her, it jolted her, you know, or like maybe hell hit her or something. But she was just kind of like whoa. Or maybe it's because I flipped the phone around. You never know. I don't know. But I don't think she would have dove out from behind the tree. But yeah, she or was more she worried about the, the lightning and how beautiful the colors were. And I'm like, trying to hold the phone still. There's Bigfoot right there. What you doing? But yes. Yeah. Anyway, she was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> you see her? I'm like, yeah, I see it. Anyways. So that's why I was like, it's beautiful. Yeah. But anyways. I just wanted to see the lightning. <laughs> it's just here to see the lightning. I don't know. It was, I love storms, though. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very interesting. So Maybe yeah. I was trying to ignore her because I felt guilty for not going out there and giving her eggs in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> but that is uh, Brown Mountain Lights. Uh, you know, it's very interesting. Uh you know, depends on somebody asked earlier, is it a sacred know. land? Uh, I think it is, isn't that uh, some type of Indian sacred land? It was, up I there? don't know, it's Pisgah National Forest. Um, I mean, it's, I mean, it's all like it all used to be Cherokee land, so and the Catawba Indians, am I saying that yeah. right? Catawba? I think so, but we'll be right back after this beautiful.
And welcome back. Thank you for Western Kentucky Bigfoot Paranormal Investigations, LLC. Don, another episode brought to you by him. Uh, yes, Laurel. Uh, it was a she because she had a lot. She was bottom heavy. She was approximately seven foot tall. Uh, crazy witch. I know you're still laughing about it. Hello, Brenda. Dougal needs to be a guest. Uh, Laurel, we need to get Sonia and Manette to get on to the sing. Uh, she does sing, believe it or not. Yes. <laughs> she does. It's, uh, it's freaking adorable, but uh, right on. Yeah. Uh, but no, it, it, it was. So I, I've always been fascinated with lights. Uh, now, one of the things that we talked about on other shows too is when you see orbs in the woods. Uh, you know, whether it's lanterns on foreheads or flashlights, uh, you could usually tell that somebody walking because what what do you say? It's got a it, bounce in it. It's it bounces. Just, yeah, you cannot. It doesn't flow just like go wood. straight line. Yes. I don't care how many magic mushrooms you eat, you can't flow through the forest all <laughs> that smoothly. <laughs> Magic mushrooms. Wow. Yeah, you okay. know, people get in the woods, they get lost. And then they get hungry and they eat magic mushrooms by accident. Hopefully. Hopefully it's the magic ones and not the ones that kill you. You watch you watched a lot of Smurfs growing up, didn't you? <laughs> no, actually oh, don't tell nobody, but that was like my least I like the snorks. The snorks were my jam. Oh they my were like underwater smurfs, but they were cooler. <laughs> But the spook lights in Texas, now what are those? Because I've always been fascinated by orbs. Uh, a lot of people that I encounter and talk to uh, says that uh, they either see uh, Bigfoot uh, orbs before Bigfoot or after a Bigfoot encounter. Uh, so they don't know if it's correlated. So it's very strange. Uh, Texas is right here, Crazy Witch. Brenda, no, but you can do Disneyland in 10 minutes. Uh, that's funny. Uh, but orbs and, and stuff, you know, it, it's weird because if you watch some of the videos on Brown Mountain, uh, at first it looks like car lights, but the way it illuminates the side of the mountains and the rock cliffs and the color of the lights are so white. And, you know, usually the the wider the light or the brighter the light, like the bluish color, the hotter the light. And I think somebody made a comment. I don't know if it was in the comment section or the video. That's the catches fire. So and that was interesting. So what is actually doing that? Uh, Joanne, I love orbs. People say they're dust, but I believe, I believe in them. You can tell the difference. Now, I do believe in orbs. Orbs are not dust. Uh, they are balls of energies. Uh, they can be fairies. Uh, they can be uh, human spirits. They My can be that all orb kinds of things. On, on the camera, I showed that to you earlier. That was pretty cool because, I mean, it looks like when you're looking at it, it does look like one of those... Um, Light ref like where the light reflects on your camera, right? You get that little thing, but it moves. You your camera has to move for it to move around. You know what I mean? No, we caught and two orbs going around your head the other night on our live show, remember? That's true. Yeah. So I didn't yes. catch them. You all did. I didn't see them, but you guys did. I was, um, I don't remember if I was about to read cards or I was about to do something and I was doing something and you all yeah. got so yeah. Crazy Witch, Brown Mountain it is, is on special thing. Now, I would love to climb up there and just to hang out. But from the way Google Maps look and the way it's designed, you either have to be dropped in by a helicopter no, or be repelled in. Those people that were on that, that cliff looking out, like there's um, there's actually, it's you can actually. Oh, oh, stop. I'm so sorry. My dogs are acting up. Um, Dougal. Um, you can actually drive right up to this one spot. It's uh, the lookout. I cannot remember the live for the live me the name of the lookout. It's a lookout, and then to go where you can just sit and watch those mountains all night. There's like it's a little. It's just a little bit of a hike. Um, it's not. A, it's a short hike or like a really short hike. Uh, Ed Brown Mountains in North Carolina. It is. It's Linville, um, Linville Gorge, and. God, it's 
It's on the Hillstown other side of Asheville, National Forest, Western North Carolina in the United States. So, yes. Yeah. It's between Boone and Asheville. It sits off to the... If Like, if I'm in Tennessee looking at North Carolina, it sits off to the left of it. But it's interesting <laughs> when the government goes out and tries to figure out what in the world's going on. And they're well, like... They would oh, tell anybody anyway. So, they're like, oh, well, we don't know. You guys figure it out. They like, I mean, they have admitted that they've had contact with aliens and that there are aliens and that they have been in contact with them a long time. They did that a couple of years ago and they did it during the pand- pandemic. So it was all sneaky, you know, so nobody would remember, you know. <laughs> He's asking Boone's or Boone's? Boone. Yeah. Boone, North Carolina. So uh, let me do this right no, here. Oh, Boone, North Carolina. He will do it like this for you, Mr. Odell. And And there you go. There we go. Now we got you covered. So, but uh, it's interesting because there's so many people that go out there and they take, you know, still photographs and videos because none of the pictures are similar. They're all different. Now, I've never seen the image before where it looked like a person was standing on the rock cliff. Now, that was new to me. So, was that a spirit? Was that a skinwalker? Was that, what was that? I don't know, but that, that I mean, it was pretty strange, like. Because um, it had legs. It had a body. It had arms. That what was standing beside the lot, what you're talking about? That one? Yes. Yeah, there was something there. And, and it's weird when we watch when I sent you that video earlier and I was watching it because you was asking me, you was like, what is it? And I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> and that's what I was looking at was that I had stopped the video completely and was like, what is that? Because it, it, it looks like something's standing there beside that light. Like it's, you know, and it made me wonder because it didn't look like trees. It didn't look like the rocks. When the light lit up, you could see the rocks formation. You could see the trees at one point. And nothing else up there looked like that exactly. So that was kind of, that was, and he didn't mention it. I don't even think that he thought about it because he's more concerned with the pictures of the lights and shit. So. Well, look how many times you have been taking selfies out in your yard and you didn't know Bigfoot was in the background until somebody else saw it. Well, I mean, those orbs the other night, like you just said, just flew around my head. And I, I mean, I've been sitting here watching the show too, but I was, I didn't notice, I didn't see them. I didn't notice them. I didn't see them. And normally I'm pretty, I'm pretty in tune with stuff. So when stuff is around, you know, of course stuff is always around me. So that's a lot. I'm lying. I'm lying. Don't even let me lie. I'm oblivious. <laughs> All right. Let me type in orbs. Let me see what the fact checker says. Uh, orbs in context of paranormal phenomenon refer to spherical or circular shapes that appear in photographs or videos. They're often attributed to spiritual or supernatural activity. Orbs were commonly associated with ghostly encounters or presence of spirits. Some people believe that orbs captured in photographs or videos represents the energy of essence of spirits or entities from the spirit world. Why others suggest that orbs were caused by natural phenomenon such as dust particles, which now, ladies and gentlemen, now there are a lot of fakes out there where there are dust particles. Now, I will agree with that. Now, and you can tell the difference it's between dust and a, an orb, okay? Right. So, yes. Uh, and water droplets, you can tell the difference between that. Insects and reflections of light, you can tell if you know your orbs. And, uh, the, and spider webs. Spider webs are a big one. Or silkworms, they'll put like one, you know, one, one thread or one like, yeah, one thread of like silk out. And if it blows in front of a camera, it can look pretty crazy. Yeah. So. Uh, the natural explanation the purposes of the orbs are simply artifacts created by the camera lens or environmental conditions. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I, I say no to the hell to the camera. No. Now, you have moisture in the camera on uh, the new digital cameras. Uh, yes, you can, but the bodies and everything are sealed so tightly in the seals. And it's not like the old cameras. But you can still tell a difference by taking photographs. 
Uh, yeah. The debate surrounding orbs is ongoing with skeptics providing scientific explanations. Well, look at the video. I didn't know all these years. I thought that was real. And next thing you know, it's being debunked. Well, anything, uh, and like I said, everything that's alive or has energy to it, anything that's vibrating, which everything's vibrating, um, has like an aura to it or its own aura, you know, and, and that's different with, um, with spirits and with like orbs, the orbs I've seen, the auras are different. They don't, I don't feel like they, I don't feel like they come from the same place. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it. And saying this is the part that I have a problem with, with skeptics, with skeptics providing scientific explanations. Ladies and gentlemen, there are things in this world we cannot provide scientific explanations on. I am sorry. Our minds cannot wrap around or fathom what we see and comprehend what happens in, in our reality of this world. I, I do apologize. Science is not MC equals swear to or whatever and pi 3.14 or whatever. Uh, you know, that it works nice on paper, ladies and gentlemen. But I never forget when we talked about black holes when I was growing up. Everybody thought that was funny and hilarious. And guess what? They do exist. So, I mean, come on. You know, uh, so let's let's stop and think about that. If you sit um, and think about like quantum leap, if like you know, and it's so hard to understand quantum, like quantum outside quantum entanglements, quantum thinking outside of boxes. You know, thinking. Um, I don't know, just just that whole out thinking outside the box thing is really hard for some people because it's scary and fear keeps you, you know pulled down from what you're scared of so if you're not thinking about it you can't be scared of it because if i mean i think people like want to i think people believe more than they want to to let on that they believe because they know a lot of people know manifestations real you know or like you know they'll think about something if you think about something you can create it so if you sit around thinking about certain stuff a lot of people are scared to think about certain stuff because they're afraid they'll manifest it so here's a, and I, I'm a big firm believer in quantum entanglement. I've always preached about that on other shows. Uh, Laurel, like I said before, we don't know everything there is. No, and I totally agree with you. And here is a simplified uh, definition about quantum entanglement. Because that one definition I read was so concocted and so scientific. I mean, I needed two dictionaries and encyclopedia just to understand what the heck I was reading. To the layman's book. terms. We need yeah. a definition in layman's terms. So <laughs> the quantum, the phenomenon of quantum entanglement challenges our classical intuition about how the world works. Mm -hmm. How the world works. Because it implies an intentious connection between particles, which seems to violate the principle of locality in physics. I'm going to stop right there because I don't want to blow anybody's mind away. Now, we have given previous examples and other shows about quantum entanglement and how that works between two people and parties. And it does happen. And that's what I'm saying. Good night, crazy witch. Hey, love you too, man. Peace out. Good night, really, crazy witch. You know, and... This is very important because we are taught in science, in school, in college, what is right and what is taught to be correct throughout history. Yeah, because, you know, the winners get to it write the history books. It is not correct. Book. <laughs> it is not true. It is oh. not. Well, that's Man why, okay, so is told what we want to be told and what we need to be learned and taught for a reason and we'll leave it at that so yes yeah. well i mean that's uh, i mean you have to look at like like um like during the crusades like what what they did to so many cultures and so many people and they went into like all these places you know and just went in and destroyed these people genocide in them and then they destroyed their history and these people had been around for centuries doing their thing. And they had some of them like, you know, you, you think about like the, the Egyptians and the Mayans, the Incas and all these different things. They had technology that, that they that we don't talk about, that they don't they don't allow us to know. You know, I mean, the Egyptians had batteries. They had more than just batteries. They had indoor plumbing. 
They had all kinds of crazy stuff. The Romans did, yes. The Romans yeah, did. I mean, all Romans did, 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 did too. They, they just don't talk about a lot of this. You know, they, they didn't have You can't tell me that you built the pyramid and then you couldn't find a way to irrigate water into your house. You can't convince me that that happened. <laughs> so, uh, I just typed in something out. So throughout history, there's been instances where books have been burned for various reasons, often as a form of censorship or suppression of ideas. And here's a few notable examples. Ancient Library of Alexandria, well, one not a deliberate act of burning books, the destruction of the Library of Alexandria in ancient times is often cited as a significant loss of knowledge. Now, what was lost? We will never know, ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, Qin Dynasty, China, the Ring, uh, Qin Ching Hung in 3rd uh, century BCE, uh, he went to suppress and control knowledge in books that he deemed critical to opposing his beliefs and his rules. They collected and burned. Okay. <laughs> Nazi Germany in the thirties and forties. What did they do? Collected censorship and burned. So, and can you imagine what the Vatican has in their vaults? Yes. Yes, I can. I, mean, I do it all the time. And that, that those are the those are the those are the ones you got to work for you know watch out for because like they have been going for centuries. They're the ones who did the Crusades, Catholicism, the Catholic Church. They and they call themselves Christians now, which I think they just they created Christianity themselves. And, and like we can we can argue about that and no here nor there, but they did create Christianity during the Crusades when they went through and just wiped out. All kinds of people. I mean, the, the like the what was it? The Mayans or the Inca or the one of them? They thought that they were their gods returning from the sky, even though they came in on ships from the ocean. And that's what that's why when you think about the aliens, you think about the ocean them being under the ocean. Um, when the when you know when they came in on their ships on on these people, they thought that they were their sky gods. And then they got off the ship and they were not the sky gods and they just slaughtered everybody in the villages, you know. Um, well, they said Christopher Columbus discovered America, which he never did. Nobody says that. Yeah. Let's just stop saying that nobody says that. Nobody knows. Nobody knows what the hell he was talking about. <laughs> so You can't discover a place that already has people on it. Viking ship in the Mississippi River. <laughs> so, well, yeah. yeah, well, the Mississippi River connects to the ocean. It'd be well, real hallelujah. easy. Yeah. I mean, my holy water out and bless you, child, in the name well, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, the Cherokee, when they got here, they talk about people, and this is the thing I want to tell you something. They oh, talk about on, a race God, of people. Can I you real, real quick, Norma mm -hmm. is right. In in third, uh, yeah, I know I love your nose too. It's sexy, but Norma's right. In in third century. Uh, the Romans did rewrite the religion uh, in the biblical terms. Yes, that is correct. Norma's right. So I did study that. Thank you, Norma. Good call out. Did you study uh, that at a? Where'd you study that at? Uh, Universal Church of Life, and I had to take oh, that with Christian uh, Church. <laughs> yeah, That's then weird. I also took it with Ohio University State. So yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> All religion, yeah, because um, before religions and they put labels on them, they were just a way of life. Um, like old paganism and old Judaism are about hand in hand the same thing. But nobody knows that because they've got a newer version or they've got just a certain version of what each religions are. We could go, we could go into religion for hours. Like, uh -huh. But anyway, <laughs> we won't do that. Um, but now, can you read people's auras? Can you see people's auras? Yeah. What color is mine? Like in general? Yes. Like a dark, I don't know, like a dark green gray color. And what does that mean? I'm not sure. I never thought, I'm, I, I don't know. See, I don't know my colors. Now, the, some of the other people I do with. Like, they when I color. say a dark green gray, it's like when people have ores, they have this like, it's just a resonating. Everybody has like a different color. And I mean, all different colors. Um, different things uh, 
and it's not every, it's not like every creature that I look at, like has an aura like that I see, you know, all the time. Like, unless you're interacting with me, I don't really pick up on it. Um, Brenda wants I can to know through, what like, is hers. Uh, I, <laughs> but I can see them through the TV and stuff too. Um, I'm thinking about like uh, periwinkle, like lilac colors. See, I have to know. Yeah, there's there's a chart I used to have, and and it's called chakra colors, and mm -hmm. there's aura colors, and each uh, person uh, represents a color. It talks about their health and uh, all kinds of stuff. I, I don't have it handy. I apologize. So, does your aura change? Yes, it does. Yes. Uh, your um, aura does you have, change. People have resonating colors. In general, they have like one that is their normal color, like it's in a normal aura. And uh, when they get upset, it usually gets darker. When it when they're happier, it usually gets lighter. But sometimes they, uh, they're usually in the same color scheme. <laughs> that makes sense. I don't know. For me, yeah, this is just me speak, speaking for myself. Now, um, Laura wants to know what color is hers. Let's play her some music while she's thinking. Like uh, coral colors, like like that orange, orange, like creamsicle, creamsicle color. Um, See, we need to find out. Like a pinkish orange colors. is what I'm trying to say. Or, uh, or, uh, into my mind, like. Let's see if I can. Or colors are believed to be represented the energy field surrounding a person's body. Some individuals claim to perceive or interpret these colors as a reflection of a person's physical, emotional, spiritual well-being, while the existence of interpretation of auras or subject of belief and not scientifically proven. Here are some of the associations. Ah, oh, here are the colors. Red, associated with energy, vitality, and passion. It may indicate a strong-willed and grounded individual. Orange, creamsicle. Uh, linked to creativity, enthusiasm, sociability. It may indicate a person who enjoys social interactions and possesses a vibrant personality. Yellow, associated with intellect, optimism, clarity. It may indicate a person with strong analytical skills and a positive outlook. Green, linked to growth, balance, and harmony. It may indicate a person who's compassionate, naturing, and in tune with nature. Aww. Aww. Blue, is associated with communication, intuition, serenity. It may indicate a person who is calm, empathic, and possesses strong intuitive abilities. That's interesting. No, indigo. Now, I've seen this a lot. I did not know this. It's linked to spirituality, intuition, and inner wisdom. It also may indicate a person who is spiritually inclined, deeply introspective, and intuitive. 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 Yes. <laughs> Violet. All right. Here comes Brenda. Violet, Violet. Uh, Violet associated with higher consciousness, spirituality, and mysticism uh, may indicate a person with strong connection to the spiritual self and desire for spiritual growth. Which Capricorn. That, 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 nailed, that nailed Brenda. Tell me, did I've never <laughs> seen white. I don't know why. White links to purity, clarity, and spiritual awakening may indicate a person with a high level of spiritual awareness and sense of divine connection. Most, you know, it's weird. Most kids, uh, most kids' orders when they're younger are all white. Well, that but, I can, I can, I can see. But now, like when I look at you, I don't see white. <laughs> no, I don't see white. I'm an indigo. I'm an indigo. No, I, I, I don't say I don't see indigo. I see more blue and green. That's okay. But I used to see I used to see a lot of people's auras very strongly, and it's it it, it just it, it's not like it was. So I yeah, it, it takes. See, I have to sit and think. I have to go back and like get in my mind's eye about it, because a lot of the times when I see people's auras, I'll see it when I first meet that person, 
And then I won't see it much after that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm not looking for it anymore, I guess. Stop. You leave that baby alone. Uh, chakra colors uh, are associated with energy centers of chakras in the body, according to uh, various spiritual and healing traditions. Such as Hinduism, Buddhism, each chakra is believed to have a specific color associated with it, representing different aspects of physical, emotional, and spiritual energy. Here listed <laughs> are commonly recognized chakras and their corresponding colors. Root chakra. I can, cannot pronounce this color. Located at the base of the spine, associated with grounding, stability, physical vitality, and its colors typically is red. Uh, sacral chakra, I can't pronounce this word, located in the lower abdomen, is associated with creativity, and I cannot say this word on the air, <laughs> and emotional well-being, its color is often depicted as orange. <laughs> Whoa, orange, okay. So whoever had that creamsicle. <laughs> uh, solar plexus, located in the upper uh, uh, abdomen, is associated with personal power. Confidence and transformation, and it's usually yellow. Interesting. Your heart, aww, located in the center of your chest, associated with love, compassion, and emotional balance, and it's also depicted as green or pink. Uh, your throat, located in the throat area. Why does it tell you where it's located when it tells you it's a throat? It's associated with <laughs> communication, the throat. That's the throat. You know, self-expression, and the truth, and its color is depicted as light blue. Now, your third eye, where is that located? In the middle of your forehead. That's what it says. Between the eyebrows, ladies and gentlemen, is associated with intuition, inner wisdom, and spiritual insight, and it's often color is indigo or deep blue. Uh, crown chakra, located at the top of the head, which I had no idea that what that is, is associated with spiritual connection, consciousness, and enlightenment. Its color is typically depicted as violet or white. Well, that's interesting. So, yes. That's where you get rid of your energies a lot of the time. Like, when you draw stuff out of people, you know, you can bring it out. You res Like, you have these different places in your body, and they... It's weird. You you should cleanse them there. Like you have to clear your head, you clear your heart, you clear your stomach. Um and obviously you clear your loins. <laughs> you uh it's and, and it's all cuz it's all detox. Like um even for men and stuff, it's not good for all of the stuff to be in your body all the time. It's good to clear that out. It's good to um, you know, cleanse your body and your soul and everything. What? I didn't say anything. <laughs> staring at me. I'm just saying. It's good. You have to do that. All of those things. You have to clear those spaces. Everybody is like ruled by, you know, if you, if, if you have stuff that you're lingering on with, you know, um, it makes you sick at your stomach, which makes you, you know, have a headache, which makes you have brain fog and makes you angry and makes you not make the best decisions. Everything's connected with everything, you know. Um, what is soda like? It is a. It's a gem. It's a. It's a. It's a blue mineral that's often used as a gemstone or ornamental carvings. Uh, okay, I got gotcha. you. It's for like and, and people. There's different ones. People have different things. Um, they, and you have to be really careful when you're messing with gems. And I've been thinking about this lately because my friends, they're all rock hounds. My sister's a rock hound. Um. When you have, if you if you believe in crystals and gems and stuff and the power that they contain and the power that they, because they vibrate, um, they have their own auras. A lot of them do. It's 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 wild. Um, but when you're messing with those things, a lot of them carry energy. That's why you put them in the moon to recharge them. You can put them in the sun to cleanse them. You, there's things that you got to do with them, but they hold in energy. And when you have all these different rocks or gemstones or crystals that are made specifically to do stuff, you put them all in the same area together and they're going to start working against each other. Or there's, you're going to get too much of something and not enough of the other thing. You got to be really careful. Like when you have all these different like uh, crystals around you and you don't, you know, 
you just don't want too much or not enough of those certain things, they can work against each other instead of working together. So it's just something That's to be mindful. Interesting. It really is. It's interesting. My sister's always giving everybody rocks and stuff for Christmas or like Christmas. Girl, they're Christmas. trying to get me to put my dolls in the full moon to get them charged and cleanse. I'm like, I almost did it. Well, what my, you... panel, my panel's like, oh, don't you do that, Grizzly? That's bad. I don't care what your panel said. That's not true. You should. Do you like going outside? I love going outside. Well, so would they. How would you like to be cooped up in the house all day? You want to know why things stay angry and resonate energy. If there are, if they're like whole croxes and they're like got souls trapped inside of them, they probably like a nice little like getaway. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got one out. I think you, I think you like making them angry. I think you want them to be upset, but if you want them to work with you and, you know, show you that they're there, you've got to give a little, you got to, you know, turn around and, uh, I can't hear you. After, I can't, let me get off the thing. Okay, just shut up. Oh, I what? Click. There we go. Your microphone's like not loud. It's the dolls. I'm telling you, every time I, I get so now, can you hear me? Testing, testing. Yeah, because you're over there like. Acting like they don't matter, I'd be mad too. <laughs> okay, here. So Joanne Jackson, can you hear me now? Testing, testing, one, two, one, two. The cat ball went off. The cat ball is going off. The cat ball is going off last. I knew it. As soon as I get it out. So, can you hear me all down? I don't know. Pull your, ma pull your microphone out your mouth. Okay. <laughs> no, you sound like you're 100 miles away. It's the dolls, ladies and gentlemen. Now, can you hear me? Testing, testing. Yeah, none of us can hear you. It's not just me, thank God. Nope. Dolls, would you, would you quit? Hey, well, don't blame the dolls. You're the one that won't even take them out in the moonlight. They're like, yeah, see? They're just proving me right. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Now, can you hear me? Testing, testing. Hello? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. <laughs> Are you punking me out? <laughs> no. No, nope, still not. Right. I'm not. I owe you one. I owe you one, but no, I'm not. <laughs> it's just like you. It's just like you. Like you're in the other room talking. Ever since I brought up the dolls. Like, I am like full blast. I'm like blown. And it just faded. It was weird. It just, it just, just like boom. And, and like it's can you like. Can hear me now? No. There's no way you cannot hear me. I'm I like mean, I can blast. hear you, but not like, not, not like normally. No, <laughs> Now, can you hear me? Yeah, no, I mean, it's still the same. You know what? The show's about to end. You can figure it out. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the dolls, ladies and gentlemen. Blame those girls for everything. I tell you what, the hell with you guys. With See, tell them, Laurel. The dolls want to go outside. Dolls want to go outside. They want to go outside. That proves it. Thing what now? Can you hear me? It's the same. Unbelievable. All right, I do apologize, dolls. I just threw holy water everywhere. I got look, the ball still going on. Why are you apologizing to them when you won't even take them outside? They don't want to hear your story. They want to hear we're going outside. That is like <laughs> it's not full moon yet, but. <laughs> That's right. He's he's playing us. That's what it is. <laughs> oh. 
I, no wonder I was muted. Now can Hi. you? Yeah, now that's better. I was muted. They muted my mic. <laughs> that's not funny. Take them outside. They oh, outside. Ladies and gentlemen, they are evil. I just they threw holy evil. water everywhere. Why would they be evil? Why does anything that's haunted have to be evil? Why is that? What do you, what? Why would... What is what is haunted? Haunted is evil. Evil is haunted. No, no, <laughs> no. Where did you get that definition? Haunted. All right. The concept of haunting refers to belief that location of object is hindered by supernatural entities or spirits. Hauntings are often associated with paranormal phenomenon such as strange sounds apparitions, unexplained movements, or feelings, or unease, or dread. It now, says can be. It says can be. I didn't hear evil. I didn't hear the word evil, not one time. It said supernatural. Supernatural entities. Um, just because you're scared doesn't mean it's evil. Remember that. Oh. Yeah, like and Laura says, keep on. They're going to crash the show. They will. They'll make a... Hey, don't have to worry about breaking any more of my backdrops. I want. He all... wants them to be haunted. He's teasing them and taunting them so that they'll continue. If you want them to like really speak to you and do stuff for you, you should take them outside and stop throwing water on them. <laughs> That's probably. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you know, work together. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk them out in the little hands. Let's go down south, little doggies. Why not? You just bought them to taunt them. Bought them. Well, that to was not. That was not. I first. could broaden those that two words, but I did. Purpose. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, Laurel. That was my first intense, my first purpose. Ain't that right, Jackie? And you got mad at me, Jackie. Are you here with me tonight? Are you Hillary. causing the problems? <laughs> or is it evil? Now nothing's going to respond. So. Call them evil. You should be ashamed of yourself. You owe them an apology. You, you would. You to apologize to the dolls. I do want you. And you should apologize to him. What is it? You mean you called them evil? I mean, I've been called worse, but like, I'm just trying to take up for them. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed the show tonight. We talked about Brown Mountain Lights. We talked about Chakra. We talked about Aura. Are you saying Chakra? We talked about lights. Are you saying Chakra? Say it again for me. How do you say it? Chakra. Chakra. Mm, yeah, yeah, Chakra. What did you think it's I said? Chakra. You going to shock me? <laughs> you already done that. So. It's not Chakra. It's Chakra. Chakra, okay, my lady. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are going to be our topics for next rabbit hole? Because I did like the Brown Mountain ones. That was pretty nice. I, that was kind of interesting. You're welcome, uh, Luna. You know, you know, it's it's it's. Let's talk about deer crack and Bigfoots and brain on deer crack next. Oh my God, I remember those commercials. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs <laughs> with the damn egg and the frying pan. Right. And, and man, you ought to see my buddies today. You talk to them, they're like, uh, I'm like, dude, you should have made that commercial. When we were younger, you'd have been a millionaire. So, anyway. I think it was mostly the, all the markers and all this glue you guys used to eat and sniff in school. <laughs> Glue. We had Elmer's. We didn't have that that new age glue that they had today. You know they have flavored glue now. Like I'm not even kidding. It's not flavored, but it's like I don't know if it's flavored, but it's like strawberry and blueberry. And I was like, why? Like when they were like so worried about us eating glue as kids, now it comes in like strawberry and blueberry, green apple glue. Like what? Are you, <laughs> what? These kids don't know how good they got it. We had to eat that old crappy white stuff too. <laughs> You know what I miss, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> I 
I miss the scratch and sniff stickers. Yeah. Do they still make those? We still scratch and sniff. It's just different as adults. <laughs> so, when I... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you my story on the next show. We'll figure out something entertaining. You all can feel free to email us. Uh, from coast to coast and around the world. I don't know what to say on that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. Anything you'd like to say, Sonia, before we go by? Oh, no, I'm good. Good night, everyone. Love you guys. <laughs> Love you all, too. Take care. God bless. See you soon. Bye-bye. It's a grizzly. Should we get out of here? No. We're gonna watch and listen. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, ship, should we run? <laughs> no. Action. It's a grizzly. Oh, shit. should we run? <laughs> okay. It's a grizzly. Are you sure it's not a chipmunk? <laughs> No, ah, I'm out of here. <laughs> it's a grizzly. Oh, money here. Huh? Maybe it is a chipmunk. <gasps> it's a grizzly. Are we gonna die? I don't know. We're just gonna sit here and listen and watch. Let's get out of here, maybe. <laughs> Fall! <laughs>